Hello and welcome to another short video in this series that's getting you the top grades on each character in an Inspector Calls. Here we have the conventional view, the one that's going to get you up to grade 6, possibly into grade 7. So Arthur Burling is corrupt and unfeeling. He cares nothing for people he has power over and he therefore symbolises what's wrong with capitalism. So Priestley uses him as a construct, remember that phrase, it keeps coming up, he uses Arthur Burling as a construct to criticise capitalism and show what's wrong with it, and that then helps the inspector deliver Priestley's message, which is that we should become a more caring and socialist society. But let's dig deeper really quickly and zoom up the grades. Well, why is he called Burling Arthur? Well, Arthur clearly symbolises King Arthur. Um, he symbolises the kind of idealised version of what a king should be. So King Arthur was idealised, a symbol of good rule, and he's still used that way now, and he was certainly used that way in Priestley's time to symbolise uh, what it is to be a good ruler. Whereas Arthur Burling is the opposite, He's got all this power in society as a rich manufacturer. He's a magistrate. He's been Lord Mayor. But instead of helping people, he exploits them. Well, obviously, this links to Priestley's socialist message. Um, so let's see how he uses Arthur Burling to exemplify that. So this is shown in his description of the strike, where he sacked Eva and the other ringleaders. And he called it a pitiful affair. Now, King Arthur, of course, would have meant this to mean an affair for which I should feel pity. He would have pitied the people who were disadvantaged and tried to help them. King Arthur was all about chivalry, which basically means using your power for good to help others. But not Arthur Burling. So a pitiful affair here shows his lack of feeling, again using irony. Yes, yeah, so pity fully pitiful originally meant full of pity but here it means the opposite he's got no pity for them at all uh, and so it's a complete lack of pity a contempt and this is what Priestley is saying capitalists are like they have contempt for the ordinary working man or woman represented by the millions of Eva Smiths and the millions of John Smiths that the inspector mentions just as he leaves the play and so this is an easy way into talking about what's wrong with capitalism in Priestley's eyes and why he attacks Burling as a symbol of that capitalism. Right, well, to properly talk about why Priestley presents Burling in this way, you have to know a little bit about 1945 politics. Why 1945? Because this is when the play is written to be performed. And what's crucial about this is 1945 is when the Second World War in Europe ended, and it's also the year of the general election. Now, Churchill was a Conservative Prime Minister, therefore on the side of capitalists, if you like, and he was a massive national hero. So everybody expected the Conservatives to win this election. Churchill had led them to this incredible victory. However, the mood of the country was changing because they realised it was the rich who had got them into this war in the first place. It was the rich, the capitalists, who hadn't learned from the First World War, the war that was supposed to end all wars. And suddenly, here's this other Second World War. And they were blamed for that. And people like Priestley were desperate for the public to understand that it was capitalism that had led them to this. And socialism, and this idea of caring for everyone in society, which would save them from future war. And it's really important to include that in your essay writing, because most people will just write about capitalism as a financial thing you know people with financial advantages exploiting people without them it's about the business owners against the workers but to Priestley and to the electorate in 1945 it's much more than that it's about the whole idea of a society that cares for each other and therefore will avoid war as much as possible and won't see war as just another way of earning profit 
Now let me explain that idea in a bit more detail, this idea of war as a way of earning profit. So right early on in Act 1, Priestley makes Burling, because he's a construct, remember, he makes Burling describe himself like this. I'm talking, my word, that's really bad. <laughs> I'm talking as a hard-headed practical man of business, which is an allusion to the hard-headed man of business, a phrase used by Sir Stanley Baldwin, who was a prime minister twice between the two world wars. So everyone would have known this phrase, a hard-headed man of business, and they would have known it's a political phrase. And what did Sir Stanley Baldwin mean when he used it? Well, he was trying to show how the business owners made profits out of the war. That's what made them hard-headed. They were happy to sacrifice people's lives in order to make a massive profit. Because war is the ultimate capitalist dream. Why? Capitalist business owners only make money if we keep buying their stuff. Now, you've seen this in the modern day with Apple, for example, building phones which, um, you know, become obsolete after a couple of years because they just don't work properly anymore. And so we buy the next generation. Well, war was a way of doing that. You know, so, oh, I'm going to earn a fortune by manufacturing aeroplanes. But what if I could create the economic conditions where aeroplanes disappeared very quickly and we needed more planes? Oh, that sounds like a war. Well, I'm in the business of textiles. That's Crofts and the Burlings. You know, how am I going to make sure that I can keep selling people loads and loads of clothes? Well, I know. What if I make soldiers' uniforms? And, uh, hey, that's going to involve... 7,000 soldiers, sorry, 7 million soldiers, that's a lot of profit. And even better than that, 1 million of those soldiers are going to get killed and need new uniforms pretty damn quickly for the next 1 million soldiers who come along. Hmm, war, capitalist success. And so Priestley makes this argument really clearly. It's not obvious to us because we don't understand what this reference is in um, 2019, where we are now. But they, at the time, would have done. This was Sir Stanley Baldwin's attack on the way the rich exploited people. Burling represents that exploitation. Now, what's even more interesting for you is that this very phrase, the hard-headed man of business, was used in the Labour Party manifesto of 1945. So, you know, this was out and about in the newspapers, stuff that people were reading at the time, and they absolutely knew what Priestley meant here. And his meaning was, vote for a socialist government because we will make sure that the rich do not keep making money out of your loved one's deaths, out of this war that you have so bravely fought, and out of this war that you have suffered. So I hope you can see how capitalism is so strongly linked to war, and how this is actually an anti-war play, even more than it is an anti-capitalist play. The other way in which Burling is used as a construct to attack capitalism is the way that capitalists use women as commodities. A commodity is an object that you can make money out of buying and selling. Um, so let's think about how Burling uses Sheila that way. He's willing, I'm going to put this in capitalist terms, to sell his daughter to Gerald as a business opportunity. Well, how do we know that? Well, as soon as he finds out that Gerald's been unfaithful to her, he doesn't attack Gerald. He just says, well, Sheila, I'm not defending him, but you must understand that a lot of young men, bloody, bloody, blah, he's not allowed to finish. But what he means is, this is just the way we rich men behave. And because we're rich men, you ought to just let us carry on in that way. And why do I use the word us? Well, because Sybil then says to Sheila that she had to put up with Arthur Burling being away, and I put this in quotation marks, on business. Just as Gerald says, I was away on business, when really he wasn't. He was uh, shacked up with Daisy Renton, who is Ava Smith. And this is just how privileged men behaved. Well, what's that got to do with capitalism again? Well, because Burling wants to make a financial alliance by linking um, Croft's business to Burling's business. 
it's all about making money and therefore Sheila becomes a commodity, a pawn if you prefer, a commodity he can exchange for greater financial and social influence. Let's look at that in a bit more detail. The marriage is mainly a way to improve business and so Burling refers to the marriage as an alliance between the companies. Although he tells the inspector that he would give thousands, yes thousands, to bring Eva back to life at, at the end of the inspector's time in the play, as soon as he finds out that the inspector is not real, he stops caring. He doesn't want to give any money to help the poor at all. So really this is the way that Burling is constructed as a capitalist to show that it's all about self-interest, it's all about business, and the promise of money to help the poor is actually withheld. And you can easily see that demonstrated with his wife, Sybil Burling, who also has money to give through the charity, but she refuses to give it to Eva. And then an easy image that you can use to explore what Priestley's up to in his construct of Burling is the idea of the Titanic. So he carefully stages the play in April of 1912, and obviously everybody knows in the audience that two weeks later, two weeks after this play, the Titanic is actually going to sink. It's going to hit that iceberg, and over a thousand people are going to die. Um, now, what's crucial there is a lot of the people who die will obviously be the rich, uh, people like Burling. So Burling's reference to the Titanic as unsinkable, absolutely unsinkable, is dramatic irony. And it's intended to make him look stupid. And therefore, because he is a symbol of the rich capitalists, Priestley wants to make them look stupid as well. But he goes a bit further than that. The Titanic possibly represents the upper classes. And so Priestley wants to show that their power and privilege will also be sunk, like the Titanic was sunk, sunk by the peace and election which will follow the Second World War. So the election, the 1945 election that's just a few months away when he's uh, putting the play on, he hopes is going to sink the Titanic of rich upper class privilege and capitalistic wealth. Okay, so Burling's reference to the Titanic isn't just to make capitalism look stupid, it's also to make capitalism look extremely vulnerable. It's to make capitalism look like something from the past that can now be changed and sunk. And he wants his audience, if you like, to be the iceberg that's going to sink the capitalism, which is the Titanic in this metaphor. So if you haven't taken notes yet, that's the best way to revise from my video. Go back through all the screens. I'll just put them up here again so that you can easily freeze the screen and take the notes that you want. That's why I put so much text in the screen for you. And uh, you can make some notes that will guarantee you grade 7 and 8 and 9 ideas. And if you've practiced stringing some sentences together in paragraphs, you will be able to get, and I promise you, you will be able to get grade 7, 8 and 9, even if you're at grade 4 and 5 at the minute. So thank you for subscribing, good luck in your revision and your exams, and see you soon on my channel.